So yeah, so number one, Kevin, everybody goes through a rut. So if you're going through a rut, that's part of life. But there's different steps you take. Number one, you have to... My name is Kevin David, and if you want real financial freedom for yourselves and for your loved ones today, then the time is now. And I will be there to help you every step of the way. What is up, guys, and welcome back to another exciting episode of your favorite podcast, or soon-to-be favorite podcast, The Kevin David Experience. Um, today, we're going to be talking with a very special guest, and I know I always say that, but it's because it's always true. So thanks to everybody who's been watching on YouTube. We just started launching it on our YouTube channel, um, and everybody who's been leaving reviews on iTunes, we appreciate you guys. So we have uh, Tim Story joining us from Orange County, um, and the first question that we ask everybody, Tim, is to describe kind of your entrepreneurial or life journey um, all the way up until right now in 60 seconds or less, and I know it's hard. No, it's easy. Some things you decide, some things you discover, I'm more of the discovery side, so I'm an artist, I just keep discovering new things, Kevin, just keeps unfolding. I love it, that's, that's, a short, that's probably the shortest and sweetest answer we've ever gotten. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that, and I like that Maya Angelou uh, poster in the background. For people who are watching on iTunes, make sure to come check it out on, uh, on YouTube and vice versa. So, Tim, one, one question that I had that I think people would be interested in is, like, where does motivation come from? Like, does it, it, do some people intrinsically and kind of naturally have more of it? Is that something that you can, like, learn? Or, or is it something that you're, you're just born with or not? Okay, I think some people are born with more of it. Uh, personality types, no doubt about it. But I think that a promise, when somebody gets a promise of something, it brings hope and expectation. So don't forget this, everyone who's listening. When you get a promise, it brings hope and expectation. Like if you tell a little kid when they're like five, we're going to Disneyland on Tuesday, the promise brings hope and expectation. So that hope and expectation equals motivation. So when you have the promise of like great things to come, you get motivated. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually really agree with that. Like I, I even like do that. I've never heard anyone articulate it like that, but it's so true. Cause like I, I love um, music. Like I, and what I'll do is I'll give myself kind of like a music festival or something to look forward to. And it'll give me more motivation, like up until that point, um, you know, to be able to like work harder and just know that, you know, you kind of have that, um, you know, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, so to speak. Um, and so another question that and I, I ask and sometimes poll some of my audience and um, ask them, you know, what questions they want me to ask, uh, you know, special guests such as yourself. Um, another question that, that people were wanting to hear an answer from you from is being in a rut, right? Like sometimes people kind of get down on themselves and they just feel like they're in a rut. Is there any like, you know, special way or, or methodology by which you've kind of come across where you can get yourself out of a rut for people who feel like they're just stuck or maybe they're dealing with things like anxiety or depression or they just feel like they can't quite, you know, make it out into that next step. So if I can't do this one, Kevin, I suck because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm known as the world's comeback coach. So let's see if I can, let's see if I can pull this one off. So yeah, All so right. number one, Kevin, everybody goes through a rut. So if you're going through a rut, that's part of life. But there's different steps you take. Number one, you have to become awake. Boom, so you wake up. Number two, you have to take inventory. What's going on in my life? Who's in my life? So you become awake, take inventory. Number three, you gotta partner with the right people. Make sure you have the right people in your life, okay? Number four, make sure you have the right principles that you're living by. Then from the right principles, you create the right plan. So that's how you break out of a rut. So when Robert Downey Jr. was in a rut, 1999, he comes to Tim Story, those are the principles I gave him, and so far he's not doing so bad. I love that. So, I, and this is a really random question, so I'm just gonna like preface it with that. Um, but I read a story, and I have no idea if this is true or not, and maybe I'm like perpetuating a rumor. But I read a story that Robert Downey Jr. went to Burger King, and like the the burger was so bad that he like totally decided to change his life. Is that like a completely random story on the internet, or is there any just like shred of truth to that? No, I mean I think that I mean Robert's my brother. We're like brothers since 1999. Uh, so I, I think that that's not the thing that changed him completely. I think that yeah. he is a person that wanted to evolve. And right. so he made like really strong decisions, but it was also open to the discovery. 
<laughs> but he's like one of the most creative people you could ever be around because not only like right. his acting side, but just his genius about life. And I serve on his board for prison reform. We're helping a lot of prisoners to change their lives. So he's a cool guy. So maybe Burger King slightly changed something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or maybe it's just some like random BuzzFeed article that like got me to click on it with a good clickbait title uh, as well, which is an interesting one. H how do people stick to things, right? Because like anybody can go on a diet for a day, right? Anybody can decide to exercise or, or change their life for a day. Anybody can, you know, want to turn their life around. But how do you actually make it sticky, right? Like what are the ways that people actually stick to these, these you know, life-changing ideas when it's so easy to kind of slip back into the habits you've already you've already. The created? easiest way way is like to partner with you. I mean, you got to partner with somebody else. I mean, you like music. So Pharrell partnered with Chad and so uh, created the Neptunes, right? So it's, it's all about partnering with the right people. So with me, I'm pretty creative, but I was fortunate enough to partner with other creatives that just keeps my creativity going. So I'm probably talking to like 15 amazing mind-boggling creatives a day how, how yeah. can I not stay in the zone so yeah you got to keep it flowing by being partnered up yeah and we we have something like that so I, I mean I have you know tens of thousands of students over the last four years helping people with like online businesses and things like that and one of the things that we teach inside of some of the uh, stuff that you know I help educate people is what we call accountability partners Right. Like if you're trying to wake up earlier, if you're trying to go to the gym, if you're trying to do this or that. Right. Something about like, you know, being accountable to other people is like in and of itself kind of a, a really deep level of motivation that's hard to like reach just by yourself. I found I would totally agree with you. So I didn't know you had this. You got to have me be a guest lecturer someday. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, no. For sure. But the accountability partner is not even an option. It is a must. You, you have to have the accountability partner. And even like Michael Jordan had accountability partners. Like he had Tim Grover in the gym that, that worked him. So any great golfer has an accountability partner. Anybody who's a creative, they have accountability partners. If they're going to stay the course, no doubt about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and so I mean that's that's a good segue into into another question that, that I got a lot when I was polling some some folks. Um, how do you how do you get a mentor like like specifically right? Because you know there's kind of like this chicken and egg problem with mentors where you know like when someone reaches a certain level of success, really the only person that they would naturally be interested in having mentor them is at a completely higher level yeah. of success and whatever you, you know, arbitrarily kind of say is success. But like, for example, you know, somebody who's a multimillionaire, they would probably want to learn from like a hundred millionaire or a billionaire, but those people don't need anything from someone generally who's kind of not at that level yet. So how do you find a mentor that's truly valuable for you and how do you become truly valuable for them? Kevin, I think there's two, two types of mentors in this case. One is the the physical mentor that you actually know that person, okay? The yeah. second is someone you may never meet in your life. Like Walt Disney could be your mentor, but yet the guy is past, he's in heaven. So, you know, I've been mentored by a lot of Walt Disney thoughts, ideas, his creative genius, but yet I will never meet Walt Disney, right? But I've also been mentored by Quincy Jones who I can physically touch because that's like my guy. So yeah. I think that for you that do not have mentors that you can touch, you could be mentored by books, YouTube videos, TED Talks. It's an amazing time to be alive because we could be mentored without even ever meeting somebody. Yeah. And the, the funny thing is, too, like I was talking to, to a close friend of mine and, you know, we were kind of talking about whether or not it makes sense to like go out and join all these like, you know, Tony Robbins, platinum, like mastermind thing just to like meet other like really high level people that can afford something like that. And this is kind of like an arbitrary example for, for everyone listening. But, you know, my my kind of argument was the best people that you can learn from are, are in autobiographies, right? And so like I try to read one or two autobiographies a week of like, you know, what I'm personally interested in is like tech founders and things like that. But I mean, you know, there's a book out there for everyone. Like I even read, I, I think you, 
you know or you uh, you know were on uh, Oprah's show at one point. I loved Oprah's autobiography, and she's very we're very different people interested in different things, but like her autobiography was incredible, right? So, you know, how, how important do you think, it, you know, reading is and how do you go about finding books that, that are going to be most impactful for you? Yeah. So no, I mean, Oprah, what a story as a teenager goes through a lot of rough stuff. And then she is the most recognizable name in the world of, of any other name. So I'm in her new book. Thank you, Oprah. I'm in her new, um, uh, documentary that she did. Thank you, Oprah. I do tours with her. I do cruises with her. Thank you, Oprah. Yeah. So she's, she's, <laughs> she's very cool. And she yeah. helped take my life like over here. It was, it was here, but then it went crazy. But yeah. um, no, I think the autobiography or biography is super smart because it's the old success leaves clues. So I'll, I'll yeah. read anywhere from a book about Versace to David Bowie to Richard Branson. But if I was life coaching you, I wouldn't have you read so many books, Kevin. I'll tell you why. Because you need you need time to let it saturate and get deep in you. I'd rather have you just yeah. sit in a book for like a month to where that person is just like so alive in you. Like I read this book about the life of Michelangelo and I allowed myself a month to just take in what this guy was about. Does that make sense? It does. 100%. Because you could just learn one little fact. But I credit you for being able to, to read that many books. <laughs> but anyway, we can learn a lot from books. The interesting thing, right, because like, and I totally 100% agree with what you're saying, like being able to like really soak it in and like really find like a more profound meaning and really put yourself in their shoes and try to visualize. Like I remember reading a quote that like, you know, uh, non-readers live one life and, and readers live a thousand or something like that. I forget the exact quote. And it's so interesting to kind of like, you know, I just read the, the IBM uh, founders book, right? Thomas Watson Jr., his son. Um, and, and it was incredible because the book literally went progressed through like 60 years of his life in the in the book. Right. And that's like a really unique thing, being able to like get watch insight of someone's learnings through 60 years uh, of their actual book. Um, and this is another random question, but I'm just curious, right? Because I was reading about Rich Paul, which is like LeBron James uh, uh, agent. Yes. And he met LeBron randomly at the airport in Ohio, right? So that's so serendipitous. Like, how did you actually meet Oprah? Like, how did you start meeting these like, you know, people like Oprah? Was it serendipitous? Did they reach out to you? Like, how, how do those things happen for people? I think the best way to do it is become really good at something. So it's like Malcolm Gladwell, 10,000 hours and become a master. So I'm not good at a lot of things. Like I cook mediocre. My Spanish is mediocre, even though I'm half Spanish. But I am a master at working with people. I became a master. And I think that I cannot be beat as a comeback coach. So yeah. what happened is I started cooking that up in my kitchen and then I started helping a few celebrities and then it got more celebrities and then more. And then the biggest celebrities in the world, their managers or agent or the celebrity would look for me. So we've never looked for one person. I just cook it up in the kitchen and they find the restaurant. So that's the best way right. to do it. Just become good at something and people will find you. Yeah. And that's kind of like the, the axiom, like don't pursue attract, right? Where, you know, <clears throat> cause I was just talking to someone the other day about networking, right? And, and generally you can kind of, you know, work really hard on your business or you can like work really hard at networking, but it's hard to do both at like a world-class level. And so, you know, the advice that this person gave me was to, instead of trying to, you know, focus full-time on networking or whatever, get really, really good at something or instead focus on the super connectors right, is what he called it. And like a super connector is somebody who can introduce you to like a large array of people where you don't have to, you know, invest like 100% of your time uh, into networking. Like what, what's your opinion on networking or, or would you just give the same answer where you just got no, really I good would, at something? I would give, kind of, a, I'd give a, a different answer, but there's some similarities in the answer. But the idea again is, is that you got to work your land. Your land is what's in front of you. If you're in, in the seventh grade, work your seventh grade land. If you're in college, work your land. What do I mean by that? You got to plow the ground. You got to plant the right seed every day. So every day I'm hustling. I'm planting the right seed. Then I'm watering, which is repetition. And then I'm going to reap the harvest. So I got to plow, plant, water, harvest. So 
you know, it's one thing for me to meet all these gigantic people, but it's nothing to be so ready that you stay there. So, so I've stayed there for 40 years. So it's, I wasn't there and then gone. I'm there for 40 years and going up. So that's the key. So you got to be ready. So you got to plow, 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 plant, 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 water, 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 harvest, 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 harvest. You want to keep harvesting. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's an interesting point, like where luck meets or like when skill meets preparation is luck. I forget the exact quote, but it reminds me of kind of what you're saying, yes. right? You have to be prepared to take advantage of a situation, which is like, you know, Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett have a, a quote that always kind of reminds me of that, which is the best type of investors are spear fishermen, right? Where, you know, you're ready at like on the edge of the river when there's like a financial crisis or whatever, and just to go all in. Right. And so like unless you have, you know, some valuable skill to offer people that you've been planting and, and you know, kind of building those skills for, for a number of years, it's difficult to actually, you know, be able to capitalize on a, a hap, like a, you know, sort of happenstance situation that that comes your way. Well, I like your thinking. So and I like that illustration of the spear fisherman to 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 be ready. But another thing I think, Kevin, it's important to realize that life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And I feel like a lot of people get very, very tired, like halfway in, because they have not like really uh, created this idea that there is longevity. So the, the best of the best that I get to be around, they're long distance runners. I mean, an, Ur an Urban Magic Johnson, that's a long distance runner. I mean, he was a great basketball player, but you should watch him as a businessman. So these are long distance runners, like a Steph yeah. Curry, already is doing entertainment. He's doing businesses. He's now in the restaurant business with my buddy, Michael Mina. Uh, these are long distance runners. So that's how I see life. Yeah. <clears throat> and ag again, like th there's a, a book, I, I think it's by Simon Sinek, I forget, but it's called The Infinite Game, where he basically talks about how like, and Jeff Bezos talks about this too, which I'm sure most of my listeners have probably heard of my, my boy, Jeff. Just kidding. I don't actually know him, but he's, you know, a big factor in all of our lives. Um, but Jeff, you know, talks about how if you, if you treat everything in life and in business as, as if it's going to last forever, you make decisions with a very different frame and through a very different lens. Right. And, and the problem is most people and most CEOs, right. Uh, you know, and just to give context, like comparatively to Amazon, they focus on the next quarterly report, right. And Amazon from the very first shareholder letter, right. Said that they were going to, you know, focus on the long term. Um, and because of that, you know, their stock has grown exponentially comparatively to, you know, 99% of other stocks, uh, you know, on the market, which is a really interesting point how, you know, when you want to take advice from someone, the most successful, richest, you know, financial person in the world is probably somebody who, who has some idea of what they're talking about. Yeah. So just like you're saying the, the, the long game is a smart game, but being very consistent and, you know, wanting to stay in the league for a long time. So none of you guys want to like become famous or celebrity, but it, then you end up on the, where are they now edition of people magazine. So, no, it's like a boom, 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 a step-by-step -step approach. Yeah. And so when you, when, like, because, you know, obviously being the, the number one comeback uh, leader in, in the world, something that I'm curious about, right? And this is not necessarily like a comeback, but like I've just seen this happen with a lot of like my more kind of like wealthier friends is sometimes people will be like grinding so hard and like so fast with their head down that they like wake up almost, you know, years later and they realize that like what they were pursuing wasn't what they actually wanted. Like, do you have like a framework or, or like a way by which you help people figure it out, like what life they really want? Cause I think a problem that a lot of people have is they like see other people's success and they pursue that without actually really thinking through whether or not that particular thing makes them personally happy and fulfilled. Yes, so great, great question. So everybody is different, but you have, you have the same idea of what life is about. Okay, and so here's what it is. You have the promise of something. So this is what I'd like, this is what I desire, whatever that is. And then you have to have the right principles so anytime you need principles, you, you hear me always talk about principles. That's the, the way in which one lives. Okay. So you have the promise, you have the principles, but then there's going to be the problems. And, and Kevin, that's where a lot of people mess up. They don't know how to get through problems. And so in the problem stage, they get entangled, they stop, they get stuck. 
So you have the promise, you have the principles, you have the problems, but then you have to have that persistence and just keep on keeping on. So I think that that's one thing that you're doing in your training, that you're teaching problem solving and the need for persistence. But the beautiful thing about life is you never know what is just around the corner. Just like LeBron met his boy at the airport, you never know who you're going to meet today. So that's the beauty of life. Yeah. And another thing with that, right, is, again, you have to be willing to, to capitalize on it, right? Because if Rich Paul, and this is a random example, but, like, if Rich Paul didn't say what up to LeBron at that point, then, you know, 12 years later, he wouldn't have LeBron as his client and 25 other, you know, big uh, athletes who, who probably came because of LeBron's, you know, name recognition and wanting to be in the same, you know, so it's just, it's just like this really interesting idea how life is like this series of kind of unpredictable events, but you have to be ready to actually capitalize on it because if you're going to wait throughout life, other people are going to take advantage of those situations that you're choosing not to. Yeah, like, for instance... When I first met Kanye West was 15 years ago, I was on an airplane going to Miami to go to uh, do something. He was going to Art Basel. He was going to meet Pharrell Williams. And I saw a big bodyguard come through and I thought it was Britney Spears' bodyguard and then I realized it wasn't. And Kanye was coming behind this guy with a backpack. And I looked around where the seats and I noticed there's only one seat left. So Kanye West, 15 years ago, puts some stuff up here, sits down, five and a half hours later, LA to Miami, we just go at it. And we've been going at it ever since. So people always say like, how did you get in his life so close like I've been all these years? It wasn't like looking for it. I was sitting in a seat and he sat next to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so it's so interesting how that happens too. And you know what I've what I've realized, and you know I've, I haven't met anywhere near as many you know celebrities as you have, and made friends with them or anything. But I've you know I've met some, and what I've realized is they're just normal people too. Like everyone, everyone has problems. Everyone has emotions. Everyone you know needs help with things. Everybody um, is just a human. And sometimes you know people kind of go through situations or, or something like that. But from from my experience, at least. Um, you know, most celebrities or whatever you want to call them are actually just kind of normal people like everyone else. Yeah, so they're, they're, we're all normal people. Their, their problems are more amplified because they're, they're more known. So let's say if one of your viewers uh, breaks up with their girlfriend, they may just break up with a girlfriend and their circle knows. But with a celebrity, it's going to be on TMZ that night. So that's the thing is the amplification. And that right. brings extra pressure on somebody. But there's no doubt about it. We're just all normal, amazing people. I love it. So the first of all, this has been an amazing podcast. I can tell everyone's going to love this. The last question that, that I ask everybody, um, and I think this is an interesting one, right? So if you had a, a time machine, but you only had enough time to go back and say one thing to 18-year-old Tim about life, about happiness, about fulfillment, um, whatever would be most meaningful to you, what would you say to him? I would say to the 18-year-old version of myself is um, continue to be patient because it's going to work out the way you saw it. So i never forget Oprah said to me in her backyard, just me and her talking, at what point did you know you're going to be Tim Story? And I said at age 10. And so I knew, I knew something was different about me and I was very patient to get here. And so I'd say to my 18 year old version, you know, be patient because it's going to work out. So I would say to you as a younger guy than me, be patient because it's all working out. I love it. And if people want to learn more about you or reach out to you, if you, if you like doing that, or they want to, you know, get your book or, or, um, <clears throat> what, what's the best way to, to kind of find out more? Yeah, so I have a best selling book right now called, uh, the miracle mentality with Harper Collins. So get that. You can get it through Jeff Bezos. Um, that's through Amazon <laughs> and I, and I do the recording of it as well. So you hear my voice reading to you for five and a half hours the miracle mentality on how to not minimize your life, how to think bigger. So I think that'd be the best thing to do at this point. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming on, Tim. I really appreciate you, brother.